Okay, some new settings in the user control. We go to user settings, and we have four users listed here. We'll just add another one. So we're going to add, uh, we'll go with David. First name David. Okay, here's a new field. We must include an email address. Uh, so we'll put in uh, David Jones. So if you, if the David Jones does not have an email address, if you just put in um, an email address with his name on it and just put a URL that even if you don't have one for it. So in this case, I'm just going to go at uh, inspire and then I'll go dot VV, which doesn't exist. Uh, what it's used for is to be uh, password retrieval or what will be used for is password retrieval and to give a unique identifier to each of the users uh, for some future um, multi-company settings that we're putting in. So we do have to have this email address. It's best if it's a valid email address, but it does not have to be. Okay, so we'll just put in a password. We do have a password checking system now to let you know you've got a good solid password. Uh, so it'll turn to a greener, a fully green color if it's the best password. Um, but you are not at this point making you put in a green password. So you can just put in the, the uh, characters uh, that you want to at this point. But we'll just let you know that it is weak, okay? And then you can save it. So now we've got our five users. And if we looked at our licensing, we'd see we have a five user system. So if we go ahead and try to add another user, Then we go save it. It'll pop up that you have you exceed the number of allowable licenses. So the good news is we do allow you to control that yourself. Okay, to easily edit the active licensed users in Spire, first of all, the user needs to have access to it. So we go under user settings, and we go to Terry here, and under general, we give him active manage active users. So as long as that's turned on, they can set who's the active licensed user. Uh, you don't need to give them access to user settings for all the other settings um, necessarily. So if you just want them to access the active user settings, then use that one. Okay, so then this dialog for Terry would not have the add, edit and delete, um, and they would only be able to edit this active flag. So here right now we have uh, four users are active, and I'm going to switch to one user to another. So I'll just hit uh, this one here, and I'll just toggle it, lower, toggle it, so that it, it comes up and says I have only a four-user system, and it's saying why do, you know that you cannot access more than that four. So that means you need to deactivate somebody first. So if I take Barry and I deactivate Barry and reactivate David. So I'm actually sorted by active flag. Let's just sort by username. And I'm going to activate Barry. Okay. You can also do that as a group. So if you want to sort by active and you want to deactivate all of these, notice if I highlight myself, it grays out the active flag, toggle active flag, because I cannot disable myself. Otherwise, of course, you couldn't be able to get into here. But if I deactivate these three people, highlight all three of them, and then activate these four or these three and active. Okay, so it's very, very quick and easy. If you do have user defined fields as well, you can actually add a field if you want to be called, I created one called um, type. So what type of person they are, shift or whatever. You sort by that. You can basically then turn on all of, oh, let's go toggle these first, turn that shift one on, turn the shift two off first, and the shift one on. So now we have three people on shift one and they're leaving, so I can just deactivate them. 
and reactivate shift, shift two, and we're ready to go. Okay, so you can do that one at a time by group. Very, very easy to change. 